Hello, my dears. How are you? I'm called Asnaka Hilo from Ethiopia. I'm physics lecturer in Hawassa University. Uh, today, we're going to deal about about uh, about the force problem. But before that, do you know how many forces do you know in nature? Look, my dears, in nature, four forces there. Strong nuclear force, weak nuclear force, and then the gravitational force and then electromagnetic force is there. And then be reminded, a strong nuclear force is a force which found between neutron and then proton. Without what you call this force, we never what you call it have what you call it nucleus and then pro I mean, I mean atom. And then another one is what you call it weak nuclear force which is very important to turn what you call a proton into neutron and vice versa by the through the beta decay. Don't worry. And then sometimes we can classify what we call the force into two classes. What we call it contact force and then contact force. It's to be contact force. The force to exert the force we have to do all the objects should be the objects should be touch each other. But main contact force never require direct touch. For instance, look what you call the force between magnet and then magnet. I mean magnet is other senses. At a certain distance, magnet can attract and then mag I mean magnet is other senses. Another very important thing in this unit or in this chapter is known as the laws of what you call a Newton's law of motion. The first law, second law, third law. First law says, if an object is at rest, it will remain at rest forever until a balance force acts upon it. And then, or if the object taking its path with constant velocity, it remains with that velocity until a balance force acts upon it. Second law of Newton says that, yeah, it's, it deals about the force and then the acceleration as well as the relation between acceleration and what we call mass. As you know, acceleration is directly proportional with the net force, but inversely proportional with mass. And then F in it becomes mass times acceleration. And then the last one is known as Newton's order law. So Newton's order law says all the states that action and reaction force are equally magnitude but opposite in direction. That's good. On the behalf of that, we have to do the first what you call it, the dynamics problem. Now remember what I mean this problem says for 3 Newton, 4 Newton, and then 12 Newton act at a point in mutually perpendicular directions. So the magnitude of the resultant force is look 3 Newton, 12, 4 Newton, and then 12 Newton, they are mutually perpendicular. And then we request the net force, the resultant force, the equivalent force which acting upon the point. So now, solution. First, what you have to do, since they are mutually perpendicular, you have to find the three Newton and the four Newton of the equivalent forces. And then they are mutually perpendicular. If so, if we say F of one is equal to simply under root of three Newton and then square plus square of four Newton. And then it becomes 9 square of n plus 1 6 or 16 square of n. And then this becomes under root of 25 square of this. And then it becomes 5n. And you don't forget, this 5 newton is also perpendicular with 12 newton. Then what we have to do, we have to find. Uh, the net or the resultant of 12 newton and 5 newton. So the same thing will true here. Now, therefore, fr2 or simply simply fr okay, becomes so under root of 5, five square of five, 5 newton plus square of 12 newton. Then it becomes is 25 square of n plus 144 square of n. And then, and then guys, it becomes, look, 
f under the root of the square root of 5 the square root of n plus 104 the square root of n this implies that 169 the square root of n then as you see this is a perfect to scale and then it becomes 13 n so this is the resultant force of the three force forces which if which act as a bone mutually perpendicular that's all thank you don't forget my dears subscribe put your comment up on the box and then follow me thank you bye bye, -bye.